And for what I'm going to talk about now is The Boys in the Boat. <laughs> Boys in the Boat, the new movie directed by George Clooney, came out on Christmas telling the true story. Talk about a very different kind of true sports story about the uh, 1930s University of Washington rowing team. Go dogs. Uh, where, yeah, go dogs. Uh, they uh, end up going and uh, defying all odds and going to the Olympics. Uh, this is about as accessible of a Christmas movie as we had this year. And it it's exactly what you want it to be. If you love great sports movies and inspiring sports stories, uh, you're going to love The Boys in the Boat. Um, it, uh, it somehow makes rowing, which can sometimes be just like, it, I don't know, it feels kind of more of a passe sport. It makes it kind of frantic and intense as you go through these races. Uh, the editing and the, the shooting of the actual races is really, really cool. And, uh, and I really dug that. I, I got into that a lot. Um, my theater was packed going to see this. Like I had to sit in the first row and, uh, and lean my what? recliner all the way back. Yeah. Cause that's all <laughs> that was available. Um, I saw this on the 26th. So the day after it released, but um, I, I, I'm giving it three and a half stars. I really enjoyed this one. Um, it, again, it's exactly what you would expect it to be, but it does everything so well in telling this great story. The performances are solid. Joel Edgerton is always great. Um, did it help that it was the UW Huskies? Sure, but it really didn't matter that much. It was, it was just a great story, and it was wonderfully told. So the boys in the boat, three and a half stars. Reminds me of another rowing movie from a few years ago, The Novice. You should check that yeah. one out. Uh, love did that you see movie. it, Adam? I, that was my top ten. I was like number two. No, I, I love that I movie. You, oh, no, The Boys in the Boat. The boys no. The boat. No, I did not. I know see you've that. seen the novice. That's the most Adam movie of all time. But uh, okay, well, so so I saw the boys in the boat. Uh, I think it's one of the worst movies of the year. I have it ranked number eighty-seven. Um, I thought it was a, a, a pretty unspeakably awful. I had a curiously similar experience to Terry. Um, I was in the front row too with a jam-packed theater, and of course the theater loved it. Now they were all, of course, over the age of seventy, so I think they were actually the people listening to the radio during the play-by-play -play in 1936. So they they associate, uh, they have a personal connection with the movie. Um, I really want to shout out George Clooney, director of Suburbicon and the Tender Bar. His direction is awe-inspiring in this movie. Uh, some really great sequences where um, every single boat race is the exact same. Like they're down in the first five minutes. Oh, you're three lengths behind. How are you ever going to come back? Every single location looks the exact same. It's trees by the water. There's apparently a ton of fans there because rowing was so big in the 30s. The play-by-play -play on the radio, like I said, I mean, every it, it, America was captivated. It's like those scenes in Cinderella Man. You know, it, it brought the depression to a screeching halt when the world could support the UW rowing team. Um, that the actor is horrible in this movie. His relationship, and I'm shocked that it wasn't Lily James who he ended up dating, is absolutely terrible. Um, it's like the movie knows that it's a boring enough story that it has to fabricate this ridiculous romantic subplot. Okay, here's the worst thing of all, though. All right. The worst thing about this movie is it doesn't even have it doesn't even have enough respect for a whatever happened to these people at the end. I was waiting for that. We got one in the Iron Claw, man. We got one in Maestro. Whatever happened to these people, the movie doesn't care. George Clooney doesn't care. Take your check. You know, uh, make a make a, a movie, produce a movie. This movie stinks. One and a half stars. I was looking forward to this moment. I knew Terry was going to love it. Uh, it's fine. Zach, it's, it's Zach, the, uh, the Man Called Auto Award for this year, Pino Award. If if this was the University of Oregon rowing team instead of UW, it'd be a three star movie. Yeah, it's true. Exactly. Not untrue. Like, like Prefontaine <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. He, he would have given the exact same review and then finished it up with it's three stars though. You know, the main guy <laughs> he's, he's not too unlike Bo Nix. I mean, he comes in as an outsider, he shakes things up, and uh, well, you know, they didn't win the championship sadly. But. This it's your number 87 of the year like yeah, that, that's not that's like right in the middle of my two and a half star movies so that's not one of the worst wow. he's only seen 75 <laughs> movies too so <laughs> oh yeah <that's> <laughs> it makes it weird yeah <laughs> makes, it, makes it a little weird a little awkward 